Hi, everybody. Hey there. This is Matt, and that's Martin from Nomaflex. Welcome back to another webinar about macro mastery. We're really excited. Today we have a, a wonderful group of questions for you. We received lots and lots of questions, uh, and we've been gathering them up in a special pile, and we put together this presentation just for you. So, uh, yeah, and um, we, we've made it easy to read, too. That's going to be fun. So uh, this one's we're going to focus today, pun fully intended, on both the focusing rail and the auto bellows because a lot of the questions have come in about that. Um, so uh, again, we said that this is Martin and Matt. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your attention. Um, at the end of this Q&A, I'm going to share a live story with you guys about backyard macro using these tools that you see here. And this is a photograph from when I was out doing this stuff. And these are the results. And if you want to learn how I did it, stick around to the end. Uh, but first up, our first question was, why and when would I choose a geared macro rail over an electronic one? That's a good question. Yeah. Exactly. That's a very good question. Um, if you're into macro photography and you have a macro lens that usually gives you magnification factors um, of, uh, all the way uh, all the way up to one or one to one or two to one, a geared macro rail is uh, just a perfect tool to use. But if you're uh, um, if you want higher magnification factors, say, let's say three to one, four to one, five to one, or even ten to one. Um, the depth of field becomes so shallow, um, a geared or a manual macro rail isn't uh, precise enough anymore. And that's uh, when you would want to use a uh, electronic focusing rail, such as our Castell Micro, which is uh, fine enough uh, all the way up to magnification factors of 50 times life size. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing what uh, I, I was playing with geared macro rails lately. I remember when you came to hang out with us in the winter time and showed us the electronic macro rail. I was really blown away by it. Uh, but that's that's a really specialized tool. Um, here's a sampling of some of the geared macro rails that Novolex has available. And from my point of view as a user, just going from not having a rail, a focusing rail, to having one is a light year leap in capabilities because your ability to simply gather, gain enough depth of field uh, to image stack, to focus stack and post-processing uh, makes it possible to do all of the things that people desire, to see the depth of field that someone would want. Uh, so there's a lot of options here, whether you have a, a single forward and back motion or side to side and forward and back and some with and without quick releases. Uh, my favorite, the one that, uh, that I've been using lately, and we'll talk I, more about. Can, can I add something? Yeah. Um, all, all of these rails we see here on this slides are, are fully ARCA compatible. So it's it's quite easy if you already have one of these or if you just want to purchase one rail, you can later buy a second one and uh, combine the two of these rails to form a cross-focusing rail. So it's, it's, a, it's a building block systems, in other words. Yes, uh, we're not allowed to say Legos, are we? <laughs> exactly. That's why I was looking for for another yes. word. <laughs> yeah, tell yeah, yeah. oh, Anyway, uh, so <laughs> so we have um, my my favorite one. I just popped it up on the side here is the Castell Mini Two. If you are just want to get into having a focusing rack, this is the best way to just get started. This will give you an incredibly fine geared focus to put underneath your camera. And I'm gonna demonstrate this to you at the end and show you the results about how that unlocks great potential in creating amazing macro. Um, and then of course there is, uh, there is the other, um, the other, which I'm just, I'm just gonna show a quick video here. Like you have um, playing this, right? So this, this video, is uh, I'm just going to turn the sound down. This Castell Micro Achieving allows adequate us to depth of field and product. just run Noble underneath Castell and Micro have an electronically geared 
different focal points and assembling them using a bellow software. system or even so a camera where you can just take really focal truly very precise, precise things and we'll drop a, a link stacking in the software side like here so you guys can see it. Photoshop we've done a full work. webinar on this already um, and there's lots of materials out there but the difference between having the geared one and this one is when you absolutely must have precision like if you want to know down to the micron how much distance you're moving because you know your depth of field and you're going to combine these and you want to have exactly the right amount of shots so you have this perfect thing let's say you have clients that demand it that's when you would switch from having just a, a manually geared rail to an electronically controlled macro focus rail so those are my feelings about it uh, that. Perf well, just perfect explanation thanks well, matt thanks uh so yeah so this is this is a great example right here of of just having shallow depth of field this one picture right here you could see how razor thin the depth of field is you only get the face of this grasshopper and it's a perfect i mean in in some ways this is a perfect macro shot because your focus literally and figuratively is in the right place it's on the face and the eyes of this grasshopper which is something we recognize as humans the eyeballs right uh, however it's lacking a lot of context you know he's on wood but you don't know what the rest of that wood looks like you don't know what the rest of his thorax or the body looks like so this would be a great opportunity to to stack your focus but let's move on to question number two can i convert my kit lens into a full-fledged macro lens is that possible of course you can um it's it's quite simple by adding a um auto reversing ring and um that's a that's a very cool product by uh, which allows you to just reverse mount your standard kit lens and we always recommend zoom lenses over prime lenses and um that's a quite easy and inexpensive way of um well, let's say convert the lens into some sort of a loop lens. It, it magnifies everything that's in, in, in front of the lens. And uh, by reversing the lens, you naturally you lose uh, the entire communication between the camera and the lens. But uh, using one of these, one of the Novoflex auto reversing rings allows you to uh, maintain the entire communication. So you are still able or capable of uh, controlling the aperture. And in some rare cases, you're even capable of using autofocus. Even so, it's it's quite difficult to use autofocus in macro photography because of the shallow depths of field. And the autofocus will quite literally hunt for something it can it can grab onto. So it's 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 best to uh, add a focusing rail underneath. Yep. But, we, have, we have a little bit more information about that in the next question too. Exactly. But uh, why don't we just show people how we how to set up um, a camera and a lens uh, by by adding the auto reversing ring? I'd love to see that. Okay, um, I have a Fuji uh, XT1 here in my little studio together with a kit lens. It's a 55 to 200. And what I just do, I uh, detach the lens from the camera. And uh, what's, what's uh, quite interesting to know is that the uh, auto reversing ring comes with a 58 millimeter filter thread by default. So if your lens has a different filter thread, like this one has, it has a 62 millimeter filter thread, you need uh, one of these adapters in between, not one of these little stepping rings. They are available in uh, different sizes, um, all the way down to 37 millimeters and all the way up to 82 millimeters. So I just add the uh, stepping ring to my lens. I add the camera side part of the reversing ring to the stepping ring. And now you can see it has the camera bayonet mount and the contacts sitting right here. I add the other side to the back of the lens. And now I'm able to reverse mount the lens to my camera. And the uh, cable here, the wire here, allows me to uh, control the aperture in the lens as 
if the lens would be attached to the camera la camera in the in the normal way. So that's how easy it is. That's amazing. I, I when I when I first got my retro adapter, uh, I was astounded how simply it works. Uh, and I use a Nikon Z, so I use the FTC adapter. And um, but it was it was a fifty millimeter lens, and I reversed it. It was great. Contrary to your your suggestion that you use kit lenses, you know, I'm just a little bit of a maverick sometimes. Um, it, it works out great for me. It's got crazy bokeh. So yeah. So that's. Uh, that's fantastic. We have our next question leads right into that one. Uh, and I'm going to get it up here. And we'll just look at a, another shallow depth of field image. Look at that. That one could have also been stepped a little bit in the focus. Um, so does autofocus work with lens reversing rings? Which NovaFlex, by the way, calls retro adapters, the all caps retro. That's the product designation. Uh, so that and lens reversing rings are synonymous. They mean the same thing uh, when we're talking about them. Well, we, 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 we kind of gave the answer to that question in the previous question, but, uh, um, well, let's just repeat it. Um, even though the entire communication is maintained between the camera and the reverse mounted lens, um, autofocus will um, quite literally hunt uh, and in search for the correct focus or to settle on um, the focus area uh, due to the shallow depths depths of field there is usually not enough contrast in your shots and so um, in most cases autofocus won't work properly and that's that's the main reason we we always uh, recommend to use a, a focusing rail to complement any uh, reversing adapter fantastic uh, I I have I, have a, I agree with you. Those are the things that I experience sometimes at, at lower magnifications. Autofocus works, but it, it's definitely not something to rely on. And you waste a lot less time if you simply set it to manual focus, set it to the closest focus point, and then use other means to focus, such as moving your camera using a focus rail. And there's, a, there's an interesting fact that um, I forgot to mention uh, is that um, most standard kit lenses, if reversed on the camera, um, well, they have outstanding quality. They 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 live up quite literally. So it's 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 right. an interesting fact. So right. just try to reverse mount a standard eighteen to fifty five millimeter lens, or even that fifty five to two hundred millimeter lens. It's a it's a very inexpensive lens, but if you reverse mount it, you will. You will be amazed to see what what kind of quality these lenses are capable of giving. So you're saying that they could actually be sharper if you reverse them? Yes, absolutely. That's, that's amazing. You can get even more value out of your kit lens by turning it around. Exactly. That seems counterintuitive. But that's <laughs> it is. I love it. I love it. So you can get one more visit to our grasshopper. You can get shots like this. You know, and this this would be a more appropriate shot. We were talking about how head on before um, that it didn't tell enough of a story. This shot from the side of the grasshopper with that slice of focus tells a more complete story. So I just wanted to illustrate that. Um, and, and this was done with a reversed lens. Uh, great. Question number five. When I reverse my lens, how does the front of my lens attach to the adapter? I think I want to see this up close. Okay, uh, let's let's show this again. Um, I just detached the reverse mounted lens. So, so let's show this again. This is the front of your lens with the standard filter thread, and just. Let's just repeat it. The um, reversing ring has a 58 millimeter filter thread by default. That's very important. And if your lens has a different filter thread, you need one of these uh, one of these stepping rings. So there's different uh, uh, stepping rings available, all the way down to 37 millimeters and all the way up to 82 millimeters. Just screw in the stepping ring again. Screw in the camera side portion of the retro adapter. 
and attach the rear portion to this side. And whoops, where's the red dot? Line up the red dots. And we're ready for shooting stunning macro images. I love it. Now, while you have that up, the next question leads right into that configuration. Uh, this I've been asked, I don't, I don't know, two times a day. Can you use filters with your lens reversed? Absolutely, you can. And there's even um, a 58 millimeter uh, protection filter included in uh, the kit of each reversing ring. So um, if you have already have 58 millimeter filters, even ND filters, polarizers, um, skylight filters, whatever, you, you can use them, of course. And if you have uh, filters with different sizes, you may use um, a stepping ring in between. Absolutely. You may even use a ring light if there is enough uh, working distance in between uh, the, in between your subject and uh, your lens. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, I know that, um, gosh, you need a lot of light when you're doing macro. Uh, so uh, using, using a ring light that's either an LED one with sufficient brightness or it's flash based makes all the difference when you're trying to get something to freeze and to get enough light in there to compensate for the extra distance from the objective to the, the image plane. So. Uh, well, we have an image break. This is from Alan Shapiro, who uh, we haven't announced it yet, but we're announcing it now. Alan is going to be joining us on a webinar soon. Uh, and he shared some of these images with us ahead of time so that we could get you guys a little teaser of what to expect when he comes on, this macro master. Um, yep. So leading into the next, why would I use a bellows system rather than a retro adapter? What are the differences? Well, uh, a bellows system um, could give you even more magnification than uh, you would get by just reversing your lens. So adding some extra extension in between your camera and your lens would normally get you higher magnification factors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've I've, I've definitely experienced this. This is uh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it up now so that people can go uh, look at it. Um, if you want to follow the link that we just popped up on the offer side there, that leads to all of the flavors of the auto macro bellows that are available. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna take you guys on a little tour. Uh, we have something else wonderful to share with you. Uh, so I'm going to. Turn on my screen share for a second here. You get to see the background, but look at that. So we have a brand new website at novaflexus.com. Um, you're seeing this live broadcast from the United States. This is for the USA market. Many people will find this information useful, even if you don't live in the United States, you're very welcome here. But if we're talking about anything that, that are offers, uh, then please, you know, consider that this is for people that live in the United States. There are local distributors all over the world for NovaFlex. So, but here on our website, we've worked really hard, really hard to release a brand new website, which has much more comprehensive information. And you will see if you go up to macro and you go up to auto macro bellows, you get to this page, you'll see all of the flavors that are available. Um, why don't you walk us through it? Uh, what flavors are available, Martin? Well, in, in total, there's uh, seven different auto bellows available. Um, we have one for Sony E-mount users. We have one for Nikon Z, which is your favorite camera, Matt. Yes, it is. Um, we do have um, an auto bellows available for um, L-mount users, uh, which includes uh, cameras from Panasonic, Leica, and Sigma. Um, we have one for all the Micro Four Thirds shooters out there, which is Olympus and Panasonic. Um, we have one for EOS R, which is the uh, brand new uh, full frame mirrorless system camera from Canon. And then we have one for Canon EOS shooters, the uh, SLR shooters out there. Yep. So this should include seven uh, bellows in total. And we got a good question uh, right here in the chat. Uh, someone is asking for Sony A mount, which is the old Minolta mount. And no, unfortunately, we don't have uh, an auto bellows for or, or a reversing ring for this mount available. Gotcha. Um, one of the one of the things I just want to talk about here is that um, the 
the auto reversing ring for Nikon is for the Nikon Z system. Correct. Yeah, it, it is for the Nikon Z system. But if you uh, happen to have uh, some old Athmont lenses, some old Athmont gear, um, you you can combine both parts uh, by putting the original Nikon FTZ adapter in between. Right, but that means that you can use it with a Nikon Z body, and either right. Nikon mounted lenses. That is correct. Yeah. So it's just some of some people who have a Nikon F mount body out there and want to use the bellows. Not possible. Yeah, not, not, not the auto bellows. Not the auto bellows. Sorry. Yeah. We have a no. manual way of attaching an Icon F mount camera to a bellows, but not the auto bellows. Right. And the 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 reason being, as we discussed before, is that if you want to pass through the electronic uh, information from the lens and have auto iris diaphragm, have it stop down when you hit the shutter, that's where it starts to matter. It keeps the lens brighter while between shots, and all. Of it functions like a regular lens. Let's just leave it at that. That's a perfect explanation. Yeah. Uh, you don't have any other workarounds. So, Not yeah. Yet. So we'll have another little image break here. Here's another teaser from Alan Shapiro. We're going to stay tuned. Everybody who signed up here will get another notification of when Alan's webinar is going to happen. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, the stuff he's been making forever is beautiful, but this year especially. Um, so question number eight, if I buy a retro adapter, can I convert that to an auto bellow system? That's a great question. Of course you can. And um, all the people who have seen the auto bellows uh, will have noticed that um, some parts in them look uh, familiar, um, which um, is comes from the fact that um, the reversing rings uh, can be attached to um, this little bellows uh, by means of two uh, just standard manual adapters. You need to uh, screw in a adapter um, on one side, on one end of the uh, auto reversing ring and another adapter on the uh, other end of the auto reversing rings. And both of these rings make it possible to attach um, the auto reversing rings to the front and rear standards of this little compact bellows. So if you happen to have uh, two different camera systems, let's say a Canon EOS and Canon EOS R, all you have to do is invest in um, an auto bellows, let's say for Canon EOS, and purchase an auto reversing ring for Canon EOS R. And then you can just uh, flip around back and forth. It's, it's as easy as that. We had uh, another good question. We're going to answer everybody's questions possible at the end of this. We, we see them come again, but if we see it's like really timely, we're going to stop and add them in as we're talking here. Um, somebody asked, should I focus with the bellows or with the focusing rack underneath? That's a very good question. And um, there's just one answer to that question. You should always focus with the focusing rack underneath. Because uh, focusing with the bellows front standard will always uh, result in a change in your magnification factor. Right. You won't be able to stack the images, plain and simple. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, so set the magnification factor with your bellows. And if you want to use focus stacking or if you want to focus the entire unit, just use the, always use the focusing rack underneath. Which is why I'm going to remind everybody to check the link over on the right-hand side of the offers. I just put up the Castell Mini 2 again. Please click the link and go take a look at it. It's it's an easy way to get into doing this right. Um, I've enjoyed it. And I again, I'm going to share my story. That's coming up real soon. We're almost to the end of <laughs> these scheduled questions here. So uh, let's see what we got here. So, um, oh, look at that. We have a 10D Q&A. Hey. But first... But first, we've done a couple of those. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it fun. I'm gonna take a little break here, and um, we'll we'll take a look for our first stuff while I load up this other thing that we got to do. Why don't we uh, go into the the chat here and see what else we have to answer? Because I have one thing I got to plug in here. What do we have first in the chat? Uh huh. Let's see, is the auto bellows compatible with Sigma lenses? Uh, well, that's um, that's a good question. Um, what mount does your Sigma lenses have? Are we talking about the Sigma SA mount or do you own Sigma lenses with a Nikon mount or, um, well, a Canon mount, that's 
we should know that first to to give right. you a definitive answer. Okay. Because Sigma is making lenses for different mounts. Okay. We're going to give you a chance to answer in the chat, and we'll come back to that right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you guys through um, some fun stuff. So I uh, I got all of these items together, and I was uh, working with them uh, last week. And I have the the Laowa two to one macro native Z mount lens. I have also a Nikon Z6. I have a Fotix uh, wireless trigger. I have the Castell Mini 2. Um, and uh, I also have the Auto Bellows. So first I set up using uh, just the, the Lao lens with the focusing rack underneath. And here I have uh, two LED lights set up on either side of the macro object uh, to provide uh, I'm in open shade here, but I provided extra light because I wanted the, to pop out from the foreground, but I still wanted the background uh, to have some color in it. So I was balancing using those two uh, Nanlite Pavo 2 2 cities, which I love. They're great for macro work. Um, and here you can see that I'm checking my focus and I have a little bit of a shot from the side here. I sped this up a little bit so you could see the travel distance is very generous with the Castell Mini 2. And just with this one lens, which is a little a little special as macro lenses, I, one of the reasons I chose it, it goes to two to one natively instead of just one to one. I can go back and forth and set up a pretty generous image stack. And here, uh, this image stack that I did, I think I did about 77 images on this, this one shot alone. Um, and you can see as I'm focusing on the back there, uh, just how close I, I got but the zoom in and then my my check for composition here and just a second it's going to move into high speed and we're going to see a time lapse so i'm using a wireless trigger on purpose because i don't want to touch the camera and cause it to vibrate because every vibration is magnified by the ultra magnification that we have and here i played it four times in a row just to show you how many shots that i took it's just a little manual adjustment and then take a picture. A little manual adjustment and then take a picture. Mm -hmm. I slowed it down a little bit to show you what it's like. And this is, it looks laborious, but it's really exciting because you know you're getting from the very closest point to the very furthest point. You are getting absolutely every little slice of detail that you can so you can bring it into programs like Helicon Focus later. And this is a video clip from inside of just me racking it back and forth so you can see just how shallow that depth of field can be and why a focusing rack like the Castell Mini 2 is absolutely pivotal to this process. You can see just me moving the rack is causing it to vibrate and I'm on a really solid tripod and a really solid head and I'm using this NovaFlex gear. So you wanna move it a little bit and wait, let it settle down and take a picture and here's the result. This is the stacked image from all of those 77 pictures and from tip to tail, all the things I wanted to be in focus are in focus. So th this is just to show you from behind what it looks like um, on the left, depending on how you mount it, you can have your geared focus on the left and then the locking knob on the right. So if you wanna be extra careful, you can turn it and then lock it if you have a windy situation, or if you're just storing it, you can lock it also to make sure it doesn't move. Or if you're going vertically up and down, some people do copy work or macro work this way, you might need to lock it in between just to make sure it doesn't move at all. Uh, so this is, this was a lot of fun, this process. And oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're all sort of stuck at home right now. Um, I just walked down to my backyard and I grabbed uh, a flower from my garden and, and I had that. So next I took the auto bellows and I mounted it to my Z with the Laowa lens. And this Laowa lens, I have to point out, uh, does not have an electronics. Its diaphragm is manual. Uh, and But I still really like using it because I choose my aperture, I choose my focus, and then I stop down and everything's fine. So once I put on the bellows, I was focusing first with the bellows. And this is what you're seeing here, is me finding that front edge of the focus in between my two lights. And I just had one of those those arms that have little grabbers on it. And I put the flower on that. It's on the end of a C-stand. I tried to get as as good as I could a purchase on this. So uh, let me move this over to the other side. So, so now we can see that 
I'm just getting my focus right there, trying to find the right place to be and a couple of angles so you can see what it's looked like. Um, yeah. And I, I really uh, took another video here of the magnification. You can see just by adding the bellows and I chose a composition where I could see a little bit of the green on the left-hand side on purpose because I wanted that contrast between the red and the fuchsia and the green. And, and I wanted to show you what it looks like while you're actually focusing. And because the Z can pull nice video, this is me finding that composition right now and saying, ah, that's the pop that I wanted to see between the green and the fuchsia. And honestly, with, without the Castell Mini 2, I, I would have <laughs> a hell of a time doing this trying to move a tripod back and forth. I, I it, it's, it would be impossible without a focusing. Just cumbersome and impossible. Impossible. I mean, like I would have had to put like a really long, like rail on and then move things manually. And why not, why not have the gearing for just the right amount? So, um, so yeah, this is me uh, just focusing in and out and trying to find that right, the, the first focus and the last focus and a good composition. And it's going to pop over to showing you um, the end of the, the story here, which is the actual shooting. So this is the, the final result. This was, I guess, 55 images that I shot right here. And I didn't know that there was that much um, pollen all over. What is this, the stamen of the flower? And like, it's crazy. And this is why this, the flower is called the bees balm, because, my gosh, they love to come in there and, and get all covered with, that pollen they just i guess it's a really sweet flower so next i took and i put the lens at maximum magnification which is two to one on the lens and maximum magnification on the bellows and i said how close can i get i mounted the castell mini 2 underneath it after i racked out the bellows as much as i could here and you see me focusing all the way to two to one right there and i said how Close can I get? And my gosh, uh, the results really speak for themselves. I had to move the tripod first so that I got within the zone of being able to use the Castell Mini 2. Uh, it was a very exacting process. And I tried to make sure it was within the, the frame of the original picture so we could go from close to closer to closest as we look at the, the end of this. Um, and I'm just going to jump forward a little bit here. And there I am uh, showing you the, the range of, of motion that I have there. And thank goodness I had all of that range because I had a lot of ground to cover when I was stacking this image. And I, I even chose to not stack everything. Uh, but this is the final image. Um, I decided not to go Amazing. for the next down, but I did. You can see it's not even pollen. It's like it's all wet. But this this flower had been dead for three days, but it still had these little drops of liquid. So there's the close shot, the first one. And here's the closer shot, the second one. And then here's the closest shot right there. And uh, to me, that was a really good afternoon working through. Uh, my relationship to these tools, my relationship to a flower in my yard, enjoying my time around the house because obviously a lot of us have a little bit limited mobility right now. <laughs> um, and this is this is just a lead out to the video. This is the assembly and disassembly of, of what I had. And ignore my, my shop table out there. This is what I use when I'm cutting wood and doing projects and stuff. But um, all of these components, when I take them apart, fit very neatly in my bag. They're very compact. They're light for what they are, um, especially the benefits that I get out of doing this. Uh, I'm really, really enthusiastic about having both the Castell Mini 2 and the Auto Bellows F as macro options in my bag. Um, so so yeah, I, I wanted to share that story with you guys because I'm so excited. Uh, I had a lot of fun creating this content. I had a lot of fun just being a photographer and doing the macro work. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that I have an opportunity to, to join Martin, talk to you guys about it and say, uh, look, it's, it's possible with what you have right now. And if you add just one thing, 
it can get so much better. And that would be that Castell Mini too. Um, if if you want to get really really deep into macro, add that add the auto bellows in there, and then there's very little you can't do. Hey, it's full away. <laughs> well, Matt, thanks for showing us the beauty of your garden. Well, my pleasure. I can really fun see fun that night. you had a fun afternoon. Yeah. So I did. I did. Enough about me. I know that other people came here with questions. Thanks for listening to my story. Let's go take a look at the questions. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a good question on your work. How much do you turn the focusing knob for each image? Wow. I, I could show the, you know what? I'll make sure that this video becomes available to you guys, either in the form that it's in now uh, or as a clip from the webinar or something. I I have it here. I could show you. Um, I only moved it a fraction of a fraction. Let me just pull it off. Um, when I'm turning it, and I'm going to unlock it here, I only moved it about that much. Just about that much. That's what I did for every single one of them was that much. So th th there's another answer to that question. There is a, a lot of tables you can find online where you uh, find the exact um, um, yeah, numbers of uh, how great the um, depth of field for, for a certain uh, aperture setting is or, or a certain uh, distance with the bellows would be. And there is an, there, there's an easy way of how you can find out for yourself. Just uh, insert a ruler in your image and then you can uh, see how, how far the depth of field would extend at a certain aperture setting. And then you would half that number because uh, the images uh, should, need, over, should over, need to overlap each other in order for the stacking software to uh, process the images. And then you know how uh, far you should turn the focusing knob for each image. There is a graduated scale on every rail mm -hmm. so that when you turn it, you can see the exact amount of distance that you're traveling. That's also on the, the auto bellows. So if you want it to be mathematically correct, you could totally do it. Me, I'm a backyard macro photographer, at least for the moment, you know, and I said, all right, well, I'm going to eyeball it. I'm just going to do a little tiny bit each time. And it was sufficient for the purposes of what I was doing. So, Do uh, you use electronic or manual shutter? Uh, this one, the I'm using the mechanical shutter inside of the Z6. I don't like using the electronic shutter unless I have to at an event where it's required to be absolutely silent. Okay, so Barry, now you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what uh, else do we have? Danny Lowe asked me what's the length of the lens. This lens is the, the Lau 100 millimeter 2.8. Uh, the one, I, the mount I got is native for the Nikon Z, uh, but they have many of them. There are lots of amazing macro lenses out there. This just happens to be the one I chose. So Danilo asks, is the autobellus compatible with Ken camera and Sigma lens? Yes, there is a, uh, an autobellus available for the Canon EOS system. So if you're using Canon SLR camera and a, and a Sigma lens with EF mount, uh, you could definitely use this, this bellows uh, for your equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also used the uh, IRX 150 millimeter macro lens, which I also adore. Um, the longer your focal length, many things happen. But the thing I really enjoy is the more working distance you have between the front of your lens and the object, which gives you more room to light it. So uh, I, I do like longer focal length macro lenses. So what so, else do we have? Brenda asks, so if you go back and forth with an unexact movement, will Helicon Focus assemble photos and overlap them even if they're out of order? I can answer the first part. My unexact movements, it totally had no problem uh, to, to stack them. I've never shot focus out of order, so I, I don't know how it would handle that. Well, uh, what I can say is that Helicon Focus is very forgiving. Okay. It forgives uh, a lot of mistakes you, you can make uh, during a stacking, sh stacking sessions. Mm -hmm. All right, so what what equipment is used for digitizing 35 millimeter slides at one to one or photographing just a small portion of a slide five to one? Well, uh, we do have an accessory available for our focusing racks. It's a slide duplicator and it would slide right into these uh, little holes here. 
and this slide duplicator uh, was compatible with practically all of our uh, bellows, auto bellows, or focusing rails. And um, you can uh, digitize 35 millimeter slides. Uh, they should be framed, of course. And you could also digitize uh, menu format slides. And um, Roger, you're asking about um, a portion of a slide, five to one. Um, well, um, then I would definitely recommend, um, let's say, um, a Canon. There, there's a Canon loop lens available, which is capable of five to one, or or an auto bellows uh, with an appropriate lens that would give you five to, five times magnification. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see what else do we have here. Is auto bellows compatible with Sigma? We answered that. Um, Ball F and adapters. I think we answered that as well. Mm -hmm. When using a focusing rail or a bellows on a copy stand, will the weight of the camera or lens cause the standards to drift down? Um, no, they won't if, uh, as long as if you're not using any heavy, let's say, large format equipment, any uh, extremely heavy lenses with built-in shutters. So if you're using uh, standard equipment, DSLR equipment, uh, they definitely won't drift at all. Right. And you always have that uh, friction lock knob too. Ex exa exactly. So if you find that whatever you're doing for some reason causes it to pull downwards, it's not been my experience either. Um, yeah. Uh, just, I know that this was asked a couple of times and answered also in chat. This session has been recorded. It is, will be recorded. It will forever be available after the webinar. You'll get an automatic email at the end of this uh, in about 12 to 24 hours. It says, here's the replay. And it's a replica. Just like this, you'll see the chat happen in real time. We will also post it on YouTube where you can jump around to different portions uh, should you want to. Okay. Uh, sorry if anybody had technical difficulties. A lot of people are using the internet these days, so it could be local to you. So. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. So I saw several questions asking how the auto bellows is uh, yeah, being set up. If you just have the plain ball F bellows, should we just set up uh, complete auto bellows? Let's get people to see. Okay, here's our uh, auto reversing ring again. So you just need two adapters, as I explained uh, earlier. So this one here, it screws right in here. And the second adapter screws right in here. And now you can attach both parts of these, uh, this auto reversing ring to the, the front and rear standard of our bellows, we're being locked with these two knobs here. And back. And now you've turned this little bellows into a fully automatic bellows for Fuji X mount. And there's, as I explained earlier, um, if you if you own several camera systems, all you have to purchase is a second auto reversing ring, and then you can just flip between camera systems. It's that easy. I really love that you're, you're not locked in. Like what you're buying is is an object, a tool that allows you to switch lenses, to switch camera systems in the future, just by switching the mounting rings or the electronic, the retro adapter. Um, thank you for doing that. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, I, I want to add something from, from the chat that Brenda said regarding our copy stand question before. Um, Brenda has a lot of experience with repro work, uh, and I take her words very seriously when she talks. Uh, she says you don't want to leave your gear on the copy stand when it's not in use, though. So uh, don't let gravity affect it. Um, just put it on when you're using it and take it off. And thank you for that, Brenda. Thank you. Uh, Danilo asked, is it correct the statement that the shorter the, the lens is, the better the magnification? 
Uh, the higher the magnification gets, that's correct. The shorter the focal length, the higher the magnification gets, yes. Okay. But uh, also the closer you get to your subject, which will uh, make it difficult to light your subject properly. So it's sort of a thing you have to, well, figure out right. yourself. Uh, Mark asked us this, uh, Novaflex sells a lens for the auto bellows. Please tell us about it. Well, we do sell a lens that that's correct. It's a, it's a fully manual lens uh, that comes from a, from Schneider Kreuznach. It's a 90 millimeter lens. And um, we recommend this uh, lens if you want to do uh, copy work with the bellows um, all the way up to one-to-one -one magnification. And this, this lens has extreme sharpness. It's just a, a high-end lens. It's, it's so if you, if you're looking for for high end images, that's a that's a perfect perfect lens. But uh, please remember, it's a fully manual lens, so you uh, have to remove the uh, reversing ring at the manual lens in the front and uh, a manual camera adapter in the back. Gotcha. Um, we had uh, I, going back to that question we had about the wide angle uh, lens and. Is there a limit to how wide you can use for for macro? What is there a focal length beyond which you don't want to use or cannot physically use a wide angle lens? Well, that's that's an answer. Uh, that's a question to, to which there is no easy answer. Um, but I, I wouldn't go um, wider as let's say 35 to 28 millimeters but um, it's 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 a tricky question and uh, we had a lot of work to do here at our company plant in uh, trying out all different kinds of lenses and uh, with all the uh, lenses that are uh, out there for mirrorless systems these days it's it became more tricky than it was with uh, right. <laughs> SLR lenses because gotcha. they are completely different designs compared to SLR, standard SLR lenses. Right. right, but you wouldn't use like a 15 millimeter. No, I would no. not. I tried that once. So what happened? Tell us. Didn't work. Didn't Just, get anything in focus, I suppose. Whatsoever. It was like trying to focus into the fifth dimension. <laughs> OK. That's a, that's a very good answer. Super wides, no way. No way. So yeah. It, so just keep in mind, if, if you're planning on using existing lenses that you have, um, really wide lenses aren't going to work, and very wide lenses, you know. So you're going to have to, you're going to need to check on that first. So okay, that fly is really killing me. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark said he's using the slide copying adapter and loves it. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate the feedback. Thank you so much. Um, all right, what specifically does the auto bellows offer versus a manual focusing unit? Uh, say that again. Uh, what specifically does the auto bellows offer versus the manual focusing unit? Um, I'm trying to understand Rick's question here too. I, I think I think he's pretty... mixing up two two different things. The manual focusing is done by the the focusing rail, right. and then we have uh, the bellows. Right. So so Rick, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna paraphrase and please reply in the chat. Um, are you wondering what the difference is between uh, this and that, or this bellows that has the electronic connection and a bellows that does not have an electronic connection? Uh, so, so let us know what 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 difference. If you're talking about two different kinds of bellows with and without electronics, or bellows and focusing rail, um, we can we can definitely speak to that. Um, I'll tell you this. Uh, the the bellows uh, having the auto diaphragm and having the lens information pass through and having it act like a regular lens, with the exception of trying to use autofocus, is very valuable to me. Otherwise, you're looking through a dark lens. It's kind of like in the days of having a view camera, where if you forgot, um, you know, like sometimes the, it was just stopped down, so you'd have to open it up to focus and then stop it down to take the picture. It, and it got darker as you stopped down until the, the shutters got better. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, 
it's it's really important to think about that if you want to have macro your workflow is going to be magnified times the number of pictures you take and times the number of setups that you have so every efficiency that you can add into that process ends up paying you back in time or in money especially if people pay you to do product work with macro so um can consider and weigh those as you're choosing um but but the thing that I took out of the last two weeks and the most important thing I understand is the Castell Mini 2 is just never leaving my bag from now on. I'm going to use it for the other stuff that I do, like uh, Astro Landscape work, where I can do focus stacks uh, from from foregrounds to, to the stars. Um, I have ideas on, on how to make that help, so I don't need to change my focus a lot. Uh, yeah, so I, I my my wheels are turning. Looking forward to seeing those images. I think we nailed it. Rick said, "Got it." I think I think he understood. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Out. Awesome. Yep. Well, then uh, we did everything right, I guess. I think we did. So let's let's see if there's any other essential information we have that we prepared for everybody. Aha! If we missed your question, we're very sorry. We tried to scrub the chat. We will follow up. We always look through the chat and we always reply. Uh, so we'll get back to you by email. And thank you so much for participating. We appreciate you being here. Um, it would mean a lot to us if you join us in the other places we do stuff. On YouTube, it's NovaFlex US. Our brand new website uh, is NovaFlexUS.com. And then there's a global Facebook page, which is just NovaFlex, uh, where you can hear everything NovaFlex in many languages. Um, yeah, it's a, it's it's just all about gratitude at this point. We appreciate you. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, and yeah, outside of that, uh, we hope that you have a wonderful and productive day. We hope that your your imagery is joyous and that you enjoy doing what you do and that you find that the process is efficient. If you choose NovaFlex, we thank you for that. If you have questions about it, please let us know. Uh, we would love to answer your questions, and we love helping you find the things that help you do what you want to do. Uh, so please send those in. Um, if anybody can't find something that they want to find on our website, just reach out to us. Um, you can reply to the webinar invite. You can find us on social media. Uh, we do want to help you. Martin, do you have anything that you'd like to share? Well, thanks for every thanks to everyone. Uh, thanks for being interested in macro photography. And a big shout out to you, Matt, because you did most of the work this time for this webinar. So thank you very much. It's my pleasure. I look forward to doing more. So until then. It was fun. Bye. Peace. Have a good time, everybody. <laughs>